Welcome to the Great Salt Marsh, a unique habitat where forest meets water. Salt marshes are found on every U.S. coast, with about half of them being located along the Gulf Coast. But that's not where we are. We're right here in New Jersey, in the Northeast, where the salt marsh seems to go on for miles. The salt marsh is also home to an incredible diversity of animals, everything from reptiles to amphibians, fish, birds, and of course, epic mammals as well, like the Chincoteague pony or Assateague horse that you're seeing in some of this footage. Casey was just there and she got these amazing animals on film. But right now, we have to do something important. We have to go into this thick wall of frag, Phragmites, and find the box turtle that I've been tracking for the last year because I have not gotten a signal on him the entire summer, but I just think I got one and I think he's right in here somewhere. So I'm geared up, I'm covered in bug spray, even though I'm still gonna probably get eaten alive and uh, wish me luck. Okay, so as an assistant herpetologist, I typically track snakes by using this. This is my antenna, this is my receiver. Each snake has a unique frequency. Some snakes have one-year transmitters, some have two-year transmitters. We're using a one-year transmitter on this particular box turtle. So I need to find him because the transmitter is gonna die very soon. And once that happens, well, it'll just be stuck on the turtle and we'll never see him again. So uh, turn it on. And he is very, very close. Hear that ping? We're not far. Okay, so he's just beyond this frag right here, but it's really tall. So um, I gotta start really pushing my way through this, but he's definitely not far. Don't go into the long grass! Oh, man. I'm gonna need both hands to it. And of course we got Briar. Briar's always fun. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's getting wet because we're getting closer and closer to the edge of the marsh. That's what this turtle is in. Them up somewhere right around here. There's so much cover. I gotta find the exact precise spot that he's at and probably dig for him. Check it out. There he is. See him down there? Hey, buddy. See the transmitter right there? He's just perfectly nestled here in all this debris. <laughs> There he is. This is Cobalt, the blue Eastern box turtle. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about him. So if you guys were watching our videos last year, you probably got to see the initial video we did about this special turtle. He is all kinds of crazy colors, one of them being blue. He's very dirty right now from being in the marsh, but when we first found him, we didn't really know what was going on because you don't see Eastern box turtles with blue, white, orange, and red. They're usually like yellow and orange and a couple different combinations, but this animal is truly unique. So Fish and Wildlife asked me to go ahead and put a transmitter on it uh, and radio track it. So I started tracking the animal last fall. I located where he hibernated, which is right in this immediate location right here. He woke up in March and then the animal disappeared completely. I could not get a single signal on this turtle the entire summer of 2022. So I was worried. I didn't know if somebody found him and poached him because of his color. Or I don't know. I didn't know if the transmitter died, if something killed him and flew away with him. <laughs> It, I'm sorry, I'm like freaking out because it's so cool that I located him. So what's really interesting is here we are about to head into October and this animal is moving directly back to where he hibernated last year. So I think that's what he's on his way to do. We got to uh, talk to uh, the other biologists and the state and find out what we want to do about this transmitter. So there you go. That's cobalt, the blue eastern box turtle, alive, heavy, happy, and healthy, living a life almost exclusively in the Great Salt Marsh. So Cobalt, the blue box turtle, is safely back here and in holding until we hear from our state officials as to what they want to do about changing out his transmitter and when we can release him. So stay tuned for that. Hanging out here with Mr. Otis. And what I want you guys to take into consideration here is how we set up his enclosure. Oop, you all right, bud? What we've done here is created what looks like a woodland. And well, it is. It's, it's an area that Eastern box turtles would naturally occur. And we've set it up as such like a forest floor. But what's so interesting about the salt marsh 
and the box turtles that live in it is that the woodlands literally come right up to it and then it changes to the salt marsh. And what's so unique about Cobalt is that he is living a life what seems to be exclusively in the salt marsh. Like I said, he was so far out in that marsh between bodies of water and everything, I could not get to him or even get a signal on him until he moved all the way back. Now he's on the edge of the forest, but still in that marsh in all those reeds. So it seems box turtles definitely do know how to utilize the salt marsh for whatever reason that may be, and hopefully we'll figure it out. But they're not the only turtle species that you can find in this amazing ecosystem. The salt marsh seems to go on forever. When you look at all that grass growing and all the pockets of water that empty out into the bay, and most of it is all tidal and brackish, but there are freshwater areas, and you're looking at two very famous turtle species that naturally occur here in New Jersey, and many other areas, whoa. Many other areas, whoa. And these both utilize the salt marsh. They will move in and out of brackish and freshwater areas as they migrate. This little one right here is a fully grown eastern mud turtle. And this bruiser right here is a basically juvenile male common snapping turtle. I, you want to tear me apart, dude. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Incredible turtles that use the marsh for basically feeding and breeding areas and they will also use sandy areas to lay their eggs. So they can spend a pretty decent amount of time in those brackish systems and it doesn't cause them any harm. And people have even found snapping turtles and mud turtles with little barnacles on them because they do sometimes stay for extended periods before they finally do leave to take to more freshwater areas. The beautiful spotted turtle is another example of an American turtle that can be found in the salt marsh. Just like the snapping turtle and mud turtle, this species moves in and out of brackish water to hunt for food, to breed, and they do enjoy that tidal change that goes on. Spotted turtles are not very good swimmers, so they definitely don't head out to that deep water and you most likely will not see them in the bay and certainly not in the ocean, but they absolutely love those muddy estuaries and tidal pools where they can hunt for little invertebrates and then head back to freshwater as soon as they feel like it. So here's another creature that you may not expect to be associated with the salt marsh. But like the Shigatig pony, they can be found at least nearby. This is the marbled salamander. It's a mole salamander, meaning it spends much of its life underground or at least under logs. And it occurs in the woodlands that hug the salt marsh. So similar to the box turtle, these animals can be found in those wet woodlands, in leaf litter, uh, they look for vernal pools and stuff like that, and they will not venture into brackish water, at least not to my knowledge, but they are sometimes found remarkably close to it. So pretty interesting, super amazing little creatures. This animal is truly fascinating and absolutely beautiful, and you can see why they call it the marbled salamander. Here's another fascinating creature, a reptile, a snake to be exact, and this animal really does use the salt marsh, but it's not there for the water, it's there for prey. Eastern king snakes, like this beautiful young girl right here, will make a meal out of turtle eggs, and since there are so many turtles using the salt marsh, these snakes will not hesitate to come out into there and look for those turtle eggs. One other thing that they're eating, other snakes. That's how the king snake gets its name. Now this is the eastern king snake, also known as the chain king because of that chain link pattern that you can see there on its sides. And king snakes will hunt down other species of snake like water snakes, ribbon snakes, and garter snakes, and even young black rat snakes that also can be found moving through and around the precious salt marsh. Super cool, circle of life. One of my favorite species of snake without a doubt. We of course could not do a video about the salt marsh without covering its most famous reptile species and that is of course the diamondback terrapin. This animal, this species of turtle, spends its entire life in the salt marsh ecosystem. It does not move into fresh water like the other species of turtle we showed you, although it does drink fresh water. So it'll leave 
the estuaries and the bays to drink from puddles or when rain falls it'll drink from the surface of the water and they'll even do it off each other's backs but you are looking at the one true and only brackish water turtle that spends its entire life in it. Now, if you follow our work here on YouTube, you've probably seen many videos of the conservation work we do with Diamondback Terrapins. And if you've been paying closer attention, then you just saw that in recent videos, we released the last or what we thought were the last hatchlings of 2022. Well, we had one last egg. We were sure it was not going to hatch, but something told us to give it a chance anyway. And we're glad we did because it did hatch and we have a beautiful little baby, not this juvenile. This is one of our ambassador animals for education and it is ready to go back to the salt marsh. So let's close this thing out and head back down there and send this animal back to where it truly belongs. So here we are, putting one last piece back into the Great Salt Marsh. This little Diamondback Terrapin is one lucky turtle, and uh, I think it's going to do well out here. At least I hope it is. Remember, it's not just about the Terrapins, it's about everything that occurs in this incredible ecosystem, and this Terrapin as a hatchling plays a very vital role, and by releasing him or her as a baby, it can get used to the way of life out here in the Great Wilderness from the start, which is what we want. So here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and release this little gem right here in this pocket. It's a tidal pool, a main feature found in all salt marshes. And wish him or her luck. We release them into these areas with the grass because the terrapins actually like to spend their time hiding in the root systems where they'll find food and everything else and they can stay properly hidden. That's it. This is it. This is the end of the 2022 season for the Northern Diamondback Terrapin and our conservation work. Maybe we'll see you as an adult one day, huh? Good luck.